Let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers mini camp, some observations and some standouts from the mini camp sessions of the Pittsburgh Steelers. One thing that Mike Tomlin said, he was asked about was he looking at highlights? What was he expecting from the players during mini camp for Pittsburgh? And he pretty much said that he was looking more for teaching opportunities and moments for players to learn, trying to get some of the younger guys and the rookies who are new to the Steelers organization, kind of acclimated with things, the way things run, the process, a little bit more comfortable with the playbook, also doing the installs and yeah, he said, you know, he always loved seeing great moments, but his main priority was teaching some of the younger guys and the newer additions to this roster. However, when it comes to QB1 at the moment, it seems as if Mitch Trubisky still is the front runner at the moment. Now, nothing has been set in stone, and Matt Canada has already came out and said that the Steelers have a plan in place for how they're going to determine the starting quarterback going into week one against Cincinnati. And it seems as if this is going to be a competition that's going to be decided in training camp. And the order, which has been confirmed from Matt Canada, is Trubisky, Rudolph, and Kenny Pickett. And some people were kind of a little bit worried about this because I actually saw this from a Steelers fan page on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. It was kind of the same quarterback rotation and order from OTAs, but I'm not thinking too much of it. We already know the kind of head coach that Mike Tomlin is. He doesn't care where you were drafted where you're from, what university you play for, you have to earn everything. So for Kenny Pickett, him being the third string quarterback at the moment behind Mason Rudolph and Mitchell Trubisky doesn't concern me because this is Mike Tomlin's way of getting Kenny Pickett to work hard and to prove to everybody that he is the starting quarterback for Pittsburgh. However, Mitchell Trubisky has been getting really good reviews at the moment. There has been teammates who have came out and praised Mr. Trubisky for his performance so far during the Steelers offseason program. Chase Claypool has said a lot of great things about Trubisky. And then you have rookie tight end slash fullback Connor Hayward who came out and said that he loves Kenny Pickett he loves how he's performed so far and there also has been some people out there who have praised Kenny Pickett for his performance during mini camp for the Steelers as well so this is a quarterback battle that's not going to be decided anytime soon we're only going to get our answer at the end of the preseason and at the end of training camp when it comes to the offensive line wasn't really anything noteworthy to talk about when it came to this unit and that's expected because there's only really so much that you can gather from minicamp when it comes to addressing the performance of the defensive line and the offensive line however the Steelers new offensive line coach Pat Meyer said that the Steelers are trying to experiment with different kind of schemes in the run game they're focusing hard on running more wide zone this upcoming season but they also are experimenting with some other schematics as well so they're trying to figure out work what works best and what are the best ways to maximize the current talent that they have on the offensive line? The offensive line is slightly improved. You did bring in the offensive guard, James Daniels, from free agency, formerly played for the Chicago Bears. And the offensive guard, I'm not too worried about, but offensive tackle probably is the big concern. You have Chuck Sakura for Dan Moore, who expected to be the two starting offensive tackles for the Steelers this year. So when when it comes to the offensive line, if you still have concerns about the offensive line and you still have a lot of questions about it, none of your questions got answered during minicamp. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer. And me personally, I'm not too worried. I think that this offensive line should play a little bit better this year compared to how it did last year. However, still a lot to be decided when it comes to the offensive line, but it seems like they're trying to experiment and finding what works best for the current guys that they have in place. Najee Harris was talked about a good amount 
some people thought he was a little bit bigger than what he was last year, but he came down and stroked on those rumors saying that he played at 240 last season. Even though the dude looks like a workout warrior at the moment, he does look a little bit more bigger. But I think that's just because how we perceive him from pictures and whatnot. But also something interesting is that There was talk about Najee Harris having a reduced workload this season. Najee Harris said that he and the coaches have talked about lighting up his workload for this season. He's okay with it. However, discussions are still ongoing, and he still wants to be on the field a lot. And for me, I understand why the Steelers want to lower his workload, and I understand why there are a lot of Steelers fans who are really happy with this news because you want to prolong the career of Najee Harris. We've seen kind of how Mike Tomlin has kind of liked to tread the wheels on his running backs a lot. He puts a lot of mileage on them really early into their careers. And with the running back position already having a short shelf life in the NFL you really want to try to limit his touches. Now, at the same time, you don't want to limit his touches to the fact that you end up decreasing, you know, the impact that he has on the offense because Najee Harris carried the load for the Steelers offense in 2021. So you still don't want his his snaps reduced to the fact that it's costing the Steelers game. So It's really intriguing to see how the Steelers are going to manage this situation. Are you going to put him on a snap count? Or how often are you going to involve him in the passing game? How many carries is he going to get in the run game? What I'm thinking is that the Steelers are probably still going to give him a bulk of carries in the run game. I still expect him to get around 15 to 20 carries a game. However, we probably might see him utilize a little bit less in the passing game simply for the fact that last year he got so much volume in the passing game because Big Ben had to check down a lot because he didn't have that much time to throw the football downfield. So him and Deontay Johnson got a lot of targets last season. However, with the fact that now you don't have Big Ben at quarterback anymore, hopefully the off the line improves so you have the opportunity to take more shots downfield. You also have tremendously improved the wide receiving room. You have Calvin Austin, George Pickens there. You have Deontay Johnson who is going to play this year. We don't know what's going to happen with him when it comes to him getting a long-term deal with Pittsburgh so there's a lot of talent in the receiver room and in the past game we also can't forget about Pat Fryermuth who is expected to have a breakout season this year so I don't think that the Steelers are going to have to rely as heavy on Najee being a factor in the passing game versus how big of a role he played in the passing game last season some standouts from minicamp have been George Pickens. He had a couple of very phenomenal plays. Couldn't get a lot of insight on the plays that he made. And it wasn't too many people who reported on some of the big plays that some of these players made. However, they have been listing a lot of reports and a lot of articles. So George Pickens has had a really good minicamp session. Many people are excited about George Pickens. Mike Tomlin was asked about George Pickens, and he said that he has a lot of great physical traits, but he does have a lot of things that he has to work on. He's really raw. So there still is a lot of room for development when it comes to George Pickens, but I can understand why so many people are excited about him. The size, where is he going to play? Is he going to play in the slot? Are they going to also utilize him outside as well? You have tight end slash fullback Connor Hayward, the younger brother of Cam Hayward. He had a one-handed catch during a two-minute drill from Kenny Pickett. So him and Kenny Pickett have had a very good connection throughout minicamp. And I'm really surprised to see him utilized as a tight end because when he was drafted, he was more of a fullback. So is he going to be more of a versatile chess piece on this offense? Is he going to spend time not only playing tight end, but fullback as well? And are the Steelers even going to use a fullback in Matt Canada's offense? And then on the defensive side of the football, Akilah Weatherspoon 
had a lot of great reviews from people who were in attendance there. You also have linebacker Miles Jack, who received a lot of praise from players in the Steelers locker room when asked about him. They said he has been balling ever since he's arrived in Pittsburgh. He also has been a great leader in the locker room also. Then Devin Bush had some pretty good reviews also. And I'm not surprised that the linebackers have been given so much praise because Brian Flores currently has been brought in as the linebackers coach. And one thing about Brian Flores that I love is that He's really aggressive when it comes to his mentality on defense. If you go back and watch the Miami Dolphins defense for over the last couple of years, they really got after it. And one of the stronger parts of their team were the linebacker play, and their linebackers played very fast. And for Devin Bush last year, he looked as if he was kind of hesitant at times. I'm not going to say he was scared, but it seemed like sometimes he didn't trust himself. And I think with Brian Flores, he's going to teach Devin Bush to see it in the tack. And same thing for Miles Jack. Miles Jack is also looking to bounce back because previously in Jacksonville in 2021, it was probably the worst season of his NFL career up to this point. So you both have two linebackers who are looking to recover from disappointing 2021 campaigns. And I think with Brian Flores being brought in as a linebackers coach, I think that is the best that you could ask for. The B coach from Brian Flores, one of the better defensive minds in the game, I think it's going to greatly benefit the whole entire linebacker room. So this is it for my Pittsburgh Steelers 2022 minicamp recap, observations, and player standouts. If you are in attendance for the Pittsburgh Steelers during their minicamp, Let me know some things that you have observed, some players that also stood out to you because there's only so much information that I can gather from Twitter and their internet, and there weren't really too many reports citing, you know, what each particular player did, which is why I weren't able to dive into particular details of how they performed. I was just basically going off the words of, The majority of what people are telling me on Twitter and on a couple of blog and websites that I've been reading up. So I appreciate you guys for listening to this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. Make sure that you check out the JT Sports Podcast on every single podcasting platform, Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from, the JT Sports Podcast is available. And I will see you guys shortly with another episode of the JT Sports Podcast.